ala nabiyya ba'da amma ba'da my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh tonight's uh, mawqif or the station the unique moment in the life of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an event of great significance that took place towards the end of the Prophet Sallallahu life. This event, now we are all the way at the very end of the Sirah, after all of the battles of the Prophet Sallallahu were over in the city of Medina. And this is the moment or the stance of the Prophet Sallallahu with the noble companion, his father-in-law, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, fi maradi wa janazati ibn Ubay ibn Salul. During the final illness, and the funeral of Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the infamous hypocrite of Medina. And there were verses of the Quran, in fact, that were revealed about this incident in Surah at tawbah the ninth chapter of the Quran. In order to really appreciate this incident, we have to really preface this with some background. We can't go into a lot of detail, but we should at least mention some background of this man who passed away and whose funeral it was. And this incident, again, it took place in the ninth year after the Hijrah. So it's, the Prophet ﷺ passed away in the eleventh year. So this is towards the end of his life, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It took place after he returned from his last and final expedition, the Battle of Tabuk, in uh, the month of Ramadan, when he returned, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. During his ten years in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ dealt not with just uh, external enemies and foes, but he also dealt with internal enemies a group of people who were appropriately called munafiqeen or hypocrites. They outwardly embraced Islam, but inwardly they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the Messenger of Allah. And through the revelation, the Prophet ﷺ was informed by Allah about the identities of these men. And yet he ﷺ took no steps to punish them. And as we know the Prophet ﷺ, the reason for this was that he only judged people by their apparent actions and their outward behavior and not based on their true feelings and their intentions. And also the Prophet ﷺ, he did not want to create an atmosphere of suspicion among the Muslims in Medina and in the community and furthermore he did not want it to be said that he killed his own citizens and followers and finally he ﷺ hoped that through his forbearance and his good manners at least some of the hypocrites might see the folly of their ways and embrace Islam sincerely. The single most malicious and the most evil of the hypocrites was none other than their ringleader, this man Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. And as evil as ibn Ubay was, the Prophet ﷺ had reason to pity ibn Ubay and to patiently try to win him over. For you see, the Prophet's arrival in Medina drastically changed ibn Ubay's life. It prevented him from achieving his single lifelong goal, that of becoming the king of Medina. And again, this is another a story uh, this, how Ibn Ubay uh, you know, turned into this hypocrite. Medina, it was known before Islam as the city of Yathrib. And it was known for its constant wars. Wars that were not waged with outsiders, but among the three inhabitants of Medina. The three factions that inhabited Medina. The Aus tribe, the Khazraj tribe, and the three Jewish tribes of Medina. And to make a long story short, these people, they were never able to have one leader to rule them. There was always internal strife and disagreement. The community was divided. And finally, they decided that they all agreed to appoint a single king to rule them. And that king, they agreed, would be Abdullah ibn Ubay. He was an easy choice. No one could find any fault in his noble lineage. And even while they were putting together the beads to make Ibn Ubay's crown, and to thus officially crown him as the king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the people of Medina, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the inhabitants of Medina, they turned away from Ibn Ubay, and thus greatly diminishing his role among them. And instead they turned to Islam and to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with open hearts. And now isolated and forlorn by his people, Ibn Ubay became bitter and resentful. His heart swelled with hatred for Islam, feeling that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had literally stolen his throne. And if Ibn Ubay was evil, he was also a realist. When he saw that all his people, the, almost the vast majority of people embraced Islam, he realized that it was futile to fight Islam from the outside. He realized that he had to embrace Islam and to fight it from within. And from that time onwards, his single obsession in life was to do harm to the religion of Islam by sowing the seeds of dissension among its adherents and by secretly aiding and abetting its enemies. 
And Ibn Ubay, he was different from the other hypocrites. He was very unique. That his, his plots were not very subtle. But he actually, uh, even though he did uh, rely a lot on secrecy, but as time passed, his reputation grew, and he eventually became widely known as the leader of Medina's hypocrites. We don't have time now to go in depth into looking at all the treacherous and harmful things that Ibn Ubay did to the Prophet ﷺ and to Islam and to the Muslims and even to the Prophet's own family. But we'll mention uh, before we mention tonight's incident, I want to quickly run through some of these uh, incidents. Or at least uh, one of them, subhanAllah, we even heard about in one of the previous harafas by brother, uh, our doctor, Dr. Muhammad Abu Talib, when he mentioned the story of Haditatul Ifq, the slander campaign against the family or the wife of the Prophet. That was one of those occasions where Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul instigated this slander, this lie against the wife of the Prophet and try to bring this dissension even among some of the companions of the Prophet Another occasion is the critical day of Uhud. We all know the battle of Uhud was a very crucial battle that was going to take place between the Muslims and the disbelievers of Quraysh. And guess what happened? Abdullah ibn Ubay, he not only deserted the battlefield at that critical and very dangerous and awkward time, but he also withdrew and he left with one third of the Muslim army. The disbelievers, they came prepared with 3,000 soldiers. The Muslims came for Uhud with 1,000 fighters. And Abdullah ibn Ubay himself, he left along with 300, leaving the Muslims in that delicate and awkward position to face the disbelievers. And this was in order to create panic and confusion in the minds of the Muslims. This is another one of those incidents. And there are, uh, again, so many other occasions where Abdullah ibn Ubay betrayed the Muslims, where he uh, was rude and he was aggressive and insulted the Prophet and it culminated really with that incident uh, that, that we heard in the previous Khadra that took place during the expedition of al muraysiyah when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when Ibn Ubay orchestrated this slander campaign against the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and he said a number of other statements as well. He said some treasonous statements that Allah mentioned in the Quran. He said, la il, la il al Madina la al -azzu min al -adhal. In that expedition, he said that if we return to Medina, once we come back to Medina, indeed the most honorable will expel therefrom the lowly or the inferior. He planned to overthrow the government of Medina. And he was referring to the Prophet when he said, Al-Athal, the contemptible or the inferior one. And he also said a number of other statements that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Munafiqun. But after all of this, the Prophet throughout his life, he never punished Abdullah ibn Ubay. He never, uh, even, uh, even though Abdullah ibn Ubay, he, did, he said many things and he should have been punished earlier on. And even he said some things or he did some actions that were worthy of him being executed. But the Prophet through his wisdom, he realized that rather than to confront Ibn Ubay, a man who had many followers, the Prophet kept him in check and at the same time he allowed him to expose himself for the great wicked evildoer that he truly was. And through the Prophet's patience and forgiveness, Ibn Ubay, he lost his influence over others with every passing day until in the end, everyone in Medina knew that he was a hypocrite and he became uh, abandoned and he was considered insignificant by everyone. He was munafiq ma'lum al nifaq And there are again other wisdoms why the Prophet did not punish him. Uh, again, we don't have time to uh, discuss them in detail. But it's, it's basically what the Prophet said to Umar, دعوا حتى لا يتحدث الناس أن محمد يقتل أصحابه he didn't want people to be saying or people who were not aware of the affairs of Medina to say that the Prophet ﷺ kills his own citizens and his own people in Medina. Tonight's story, uh, it is a very short one, so we'll be inshallah ta'ala ending momentarily. And this is now in the end of the Prophet's life in the ninth year of the Hijrah, when the Prophet ﷺ returns from Tabuk, his final expedition in Ramadan. And soon thereafter, in that same year, he is informed about the illness and then the death of this great, long-time bitter enemy of his, the chief of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. And look at the following story uh, of what transpired. And we're again going to try and combine the different narrations uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari and elsewhere. When Abdullah ibn Ubay was dying, and when he had passed away, his son, anhu, went to the Prophet and said, My father has died, and I wish you could attend him and pray the funeral prayer over him. And in another narration, he told him, if you don't show up or if you don't come for his janazah, we will be disgraced. And the Prophet 
uh, he's, he basically, uh, in one narration, he first asked him, Masmuk, what is your name? And the son said, Al Fugab ibn Abdullah. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, Bal anta Abdullah ibn Abdullah. In al Hubab is shaytan. The Prophet ﷺ said, Rather, you are Abdullah ibn Abdullah. Because al Hubab is a name of a shaytan. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he uh, went along with his son to the graveyard and he attended his father's funeral. The Prophet ﷺ attended his janazah. And his son asked the Prophet ﷺ to give him his shirt to shroud his father in. And the Prophet ﷺ did that. He, took, he gave his own shirt for uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay's shroud, and then he stood up to offer the funeral prayer and the salat al janazah for him. And the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Would you pray on him when he is a hypocrite? And he ﷺ said, Inna Allah qal, in tastaghfir lahum sab'ina marwa, wa la astaghfiranna lahum sab'ina wa sab'ina wa sab'in. He said, Allah has said to me in the Quran, and this is ayah 80 in Surah Tawbah, even if you ask 70 times for their forgiveness, to the end of this ayah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and verily, I will most definitely ask Allah for forgiveness even more than 70 times. I will ask Allah to forgive him 70 times, and then 70 more, and then 70 more. And another authentic narration, when the Prophet ﷺ stood over his body, he's about to pray the funeral prayer on him, Umar radiallahu anhu came right in front of the Prophet ﷺ and took hold of his robe, his thawb, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, are you going to offer his funeral prayer even though your Lord has forbidden you to do so? And the Prophet ﷺ said that, uh, in one narration, Umar also said to him that are you going to pray the prayer upon the enemy of Allah, Abdullah ibn Ubay, the one who said such and such on this day and this day. He started enumerating all the things Ibn Ubay had said and done in his life. And all the while the Prophet ﷺ was just smiling. And he sees Umar's point of view that yes, he has done all these things to the Muslims and to the Prophet ﷺ, and he's just listening. And when Umar wasn't stopping and was going on and mentioning Ibn Ubay's evils, the Prophet ﷺ told him, Akhira anni ya Umar, inni khuyirtu fakhtartu. He said, just leave it, Abu Umar, because indeed Allah has given me the option. I have been given the choice and I have made the choice. For Allah has said to me, and he mentioned the ayah, ask forgiveness for them or don't ask forgiveness for them even if you ask 70 times for their forgiveness Allah will never forgive them the Prophet ﷺ said وَسَأَزِيدُهُ عَلَى السَّبْعِينَ and so I will ask forgiveness for him more than 70 times he will seek forgiveness even more than 70 times in hopes that he might be forgiven and then uh, again we should keep in mind subhanAllah that who this man is, the, the man who has harmed the Prophet ﷺ, and yet the Prophet ﷺ is persistently, uh, persistently trying to seek forgiveness for him. So Umar, he said, إِنَّهُ munafiq, He is a hypocrite. And Umar, he later recounts himself, فَعَجَبُونَ He said, I was so surprised, I was amazed at my daring to talk to the Prophet ﷺ in that way. He, he didn't know what pushed him to talk to the Prophet ﷺ in that way, even though he says, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam, Allah and His Messenger know better. He didn't know why he was saying that. The Prophet ﷺ went ahead and prayed over him and made dua. Imagine, this is Salat al Janazah asking Allah to forgive him, to have mercy on him. And the Sahaba prayed along with him. And then the Prophet walked to the, with the funeral procession and stood at his grave, the grave of Abdullah ibn Ubay, until he was buried. And Umar says, Wallahi, by God, only a short while had passed until Allah revealed this verse. Just as the Prophet ﷺ had turned away, and as he was leaving and walking away, Jibreel ﷺ brought this ayah to him: "Wala tu salli ala ahadin minhum mata abadan, wala taqum ala qabri, innahum kafaru billahi wa rasulihi wa matu wa hum fasiqoon." Allah revealed to him, and never pray the funeral prayer on any one of them, meaning the hypocrites who who pass who pass away, nor stand on their grave. Because indeed they have disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger and they died as fasikeen, as rebellious, as rebellious evildoers. And Umar said ever since uh, that revelation came, the Prophet never repeated this action again until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought death to him. Brothers and sisters, we can learn so many uh, lessons from this incident, but we don't have time to uh, uh, digress and go into these in detail. But one thing that really stands out, or two things that stand out, Number one, the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ towards a treacherous enemy. Even after all that Ibn Ubay did, he for, he, the Prophet ﷺ never punished him in his life. He forgave him, but then he would think, okay, he was forbearing, he forgave him, but maybe at least he would make dua that Allah ﷻ would punish him in the hereafter. 
And this is how sometimes many of us are, that we might forgive someone in this life, and we overlook them, we don't retaliate or exact our revenge on them, but we think in our hearts, Allah will deal with them in the hereafter. Allah will punish them in the hellfire. But we see the Prophet he has now passed away, and he's not celebrating at the death of Ibn Ubay. Even when he has passed away, the Prophet is hoping that Allah would forgive him in the hereafter. And we see again here the rahmah, the mercy of the Messenger, وسلم, even towards one of his worst enemies. And the second thing that stands out, is we see the humanity of the Messenger وسلم, We see that he was just he was just a human being, and he did not have he did not have the divine knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and so he reacted. He made a personal judgment, and until Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed the ayah, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam acted according to what he knew best. And again, we see uh, this the human side of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that, and in this we have an example to follow and to uh, follow in his footsteps of Allah uh, with that inshallah ta'ala uh, we will conclude we ask Allah Azzawajal, to help us to follow the footsteps of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and to embody this characteristic of mercy subhanAllah that seems to be a theme in many of these uh, inst- instances in his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, the Ramadan quiz for tonight inshallah is uh, a verse that says again you have to mention the, num- the, the name of the surah and the verse number this verse says uh, these are those uh, upon whom Allah has bestowed His favors, the prophets from among the descendants of Adam, and of those whom we carried in the ark with Noah, the descendants of Ibrahim, Prophet Abraham, and of Israel, and of those whom we guided and chose. Whenever, uh, when the verses of the All Merciful were recited to them, they would fall down in prostration and in tears. So please mention the name of the surah.